Good evening and welcome to the HometownNewsTV.com. I'm Lori Young. And I'm John Young. On tonight's show, we're going to be looking at storm damage from around our area. We're going to be looking at last weekend with Pioneer Days that happened over in Albany. And then we're going to look at the Camp Ripley open house, plus a lot of things that are in this week's edition of the Hometown News. Let's start with that, Lori. What was in this week's paper? This week, Harvey McKay, he talks about developing high performance habits in your work, work life. Dave says is dealing with financial advice when it comes to helping out with parents. And the other article talks about treating yourself. Tom Keen, his article deals with wells, the history of how the well kind of came about. Um, we also have the Swanville and Uppsala royalty. They have coronation coming up this coming weekend. And John, you had done an article with kind of a scenario of a small town business starting up. Yeah, I wanted to kind of put some numbers out there. Now, a lot of people, they start talking about numbers or hearing numbers and they get a lot. But I wanted to really kind of lay out some numbers on what it would take to put together a business plan for a small business. So we make this fictitious pizza business and uh, the gal by the name of Julie who start, wanted to start a pizza business. Now, all the numbers and such in there are just things that are basically pulled from the air. They aren't real numbers per se. They could be very close to being accurate, but they're not real numbers. But the idea is you can read through the story of Julie and putting her business together, and then you can see as you go through of why it's really important to be supporting these little local businesses because the profit margin on some of these are so incredibly narrow because they need to you know, be able to make every sale they possibly can. So I wanted to get that out there. So that's what this week's article is all about. So John, last week we had talked about how our leaves on the trees are changing really quick here in our area and we were wondering if our area was actually ahead of Duluth and it turns out we actually are. There's a little area that kind of covers the uh, southern part of Tide County, Stearns and into Morrison County, our coverage area. We are actually 25 to 50 percent already at our ch leaf changeover and Duluth is only like at 10 percent. So we will catch the fall colors here and then when they, they all start turning and you want to go up to Duluth you can obviously follow the pretty colors. And of course we have weekends, more storms like we had just on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. We're going to lose a lot of those leaves really, really quickly. Yeah, if not trees. And harvest season is getting underway around the area. You'll have to keep an eye out now as we get into that season because the tractors are working and combines are working around the area and they're a lot slower than our vehicles. So just keep an eye out as the farmers are getting ready to bring in the fall crops. Next, we're gonna look at this week's death notices that were in the hometown news, Lori. What do we have in the paper this week with that? We have quite a few obituaries this week. Funeral services for Gerald Jerry Fulta, age 77, a Great Eagle, will be held tomorrow at 11 a.m. Friday, September 22nd at St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Great Eagle. Tillman Jim Knapp, age 91 of Albany, his services were held today, September 21st, at the Church of All Saints, St. Hedwig in Holdingford. Cody David Babineau, age 21 of Blaine, had passed away August 23rd and his funeral was held Tuesday, August 29th at St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Anoka. Margaret Margie Manning of Kansas and Mound Lake had passed away August 22nd. Services will be held Saturday, September 30th at 10 a.m. at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Gardner, Kansas. Funeral services for Teresa Stangler, age 89 of Albany, will be held at 1 o'clock Friday, September 22nd at the Church of $7 in Albany. Doris Booty, age 57 of Albany, had passed away Tuesday, September 12th, and her funeral service was held last Saturday, September 16th at the $7 Catholic Church in Albany. Alois L. Wander, age 90 of Belgrade, had passed away September 15th, his service was held on Tuesday, September 19th at Saints Peter and Paul Catholic Church in El Rosa. John Spanier, age 86 of Lake Henry, had passed away September 13th. His funeral service was held today at St. Margaret's Catholic Church in Lake Henry. Marion Cooper, age 89 of Albany, her service will be held at 11 a.m. Saturday, September 23rd at the Church of $7 in Albany. Clarice Fefferall, Age 105 of Long Prairie, her funeral service was held last Saturday, September 16th at St. Mary of Mount Carmel Catholic Church in Long Prairie. Irma Lunsford, age 89 of Long Prairie, had passed away September 16th. Her service will be held at 11 o'clock tomorrow, Friday, September 22nd at Peace United Church in Long Prairie. Next, we have a 90th birthday open house for Tom Blaze. 
That'll be held on Sunday, September 24th from 11 until 3 p.m. at the Thunder Lodge in Lawn Prairie. And you can also find the Burnhamville and the Graygill Township Minutes in this week's paper. Next, we're going to be looking at some of the upcoming events coming up to our area. What do we have, Lori? Well, we have this Saturday, the Graygill United Methodist Church is having their 11th annual hog roast, which will be from 4.30 to 7 p.m. at the Methodist Church. The Upsolite Community Covenant Church is going to be welcoming their new pastor, Pastor Mark Chapman, this coming Sunday on September 24th, and they'll be having their installation service at 10.15 a.m. St. Rosa Lions will be having their breakfast on Sunday, September 24th from 8.30 to 12, and that will be held at the St. Rosa of Lima Church Basement in St. Rosa. Albany American Legion will be having their smorgasbord breakfast on Sunday, September 24th, serving from 8 until noon, and that will be at the Church of Seven Dollars Parish Hall in Albany. And then mark your calendar, because St. John's Catholic Church in Swanville will be holding their 33rd annual craft fair, and that will be held Saturday, October 7th, from 9 until 3 at the Swanville School. So last weekend, there were a couple of neat things going on in the area that we were able to go and do a little coverage of. First off, we, we had been talking about the Pioneer Days in Albany, and that actually was going on all weekend. So we've got some footage from that, and then we went up to Little Falls. So let's start looking at the Albany Pioneer Days video. So the Albany Pioneer Days is one of the largest events in our area. This year, I couldn't believe the crowd. There were people, there were booths, there were gear, old tractors, like this old, old tractor working its way through the tractor parade. Yes, and actually I was told from someone who goes to Pioneer Days every year that he figured that this was probably the biggest one ever. Oh, it was just incredible. Generally on the grounds, there's a little bit of room. And then of course, parking, usually you're not walking a half a mile. It was incredible. I had to walk a long distance. They had demonstrations of old time ways of doing things. Here we're seeing a gentleman doing some blacksmithing here with his helpful assistant there who's getting the things all heated up and ready to go. I mentioned the trains, the model Royal Road. Well, this is the room that is full of trains and this is a, a child's paradise. The kids come in here, check this out. This is a really neat area. I know when we, we take the kids through there, they're always impressed and they just love the amount of, of passion that the railroad model club, the model railroad club there puts into their display. I enjoy it too, but I'm not a kid. Then they, of course, they have old machines. This is actually the one I talked about, the old rope making machine right there that is taking some different types of, of twine, what have you, is twisting and turning and doing their whole thing. And it makes this really colorful rope here that you're gonna see in just a second. And then they sell this at the show. So just a really neat old way of making rope. And then the big steam engines and different flywheel. You're looking at a huge flywheel, and I wanted to show you this. Just watching the video as we go a little farther, you're going to be able to get a size a size reference here because the gentlemen that are standing right there, both of those on our left of the screen are around, the gentlemen are about 5, 10 to 6 foot. And look at how much larger that wheel is than the, than the gentleman in that picture. That's an incredibly big wheel. But then they have the smaller steam engines. The little guy here was doing some things with this steam engine. It was kind of neat having some fun with that, but they're steam engines of all size. And they hold this every year, the second weekend after Labor Day. Yeah, it's a great event, and it's really, again, a time where you can see some of the old stuff at the Albany Pioneer Days. Then on Sunday, up at Camp Ripley, just north of Little Falls, they had an open house. Now, this was a chance to go and basically see all sorts of old military machines and new military machines and it was an incredible day of hands-on time to go and crawl around these tanks and go into these tanks and even some of the airplanes yes and the black hawk was there and oh there, there was a huge c-130 transport we got to go in uh the transport helicopter and there were old cars and such just a lot of neat things that you do not get to see unless you, know, you see it in a movie or something so that looked like that was going to be the bulk of our show for tonight, but then things changed this week. There was a house that was going to be moved through our area, and they had brought it into the area on Tuesday. Tell us a little bit about this house, which is sitting just over by the Rock Tavern. Yes, it actually is a two and a half, maybe? Story Farmhouse, yeah. Story Farmhouse is coming from Freeport, and it's going to be going over towards the hub direction. And they were going to bring it to the Rock Tavern parking lot to spend the night on Tuesday, and then venture on, on Wednesday to its final destination which up by the hub. So that means that they were going to be taking the electric down and doing all these different things. We end up getting a call early Wednesday morning from the electric company saying, uh, we're kind of busy. 
Yes, that their crews were too busy. The scheduled move was going to be postponed until the next day because of all the storm damage. And it's like, wait a second, we we had some wind. We had a little hail because when the storm started, there was some hail. It sounded like someone took a bunch of stones. Threw at Couldn't really tell how big they were, but it, but you could definitely tell that there was hail involved with that. A lot of wind, but we really didn't have much damage. I posted on Facebook the change of plans with the Minnesota Power. I also had notified people that if they had any storm damage or photos to share to please share them with us. Right. And Janice Pagel on the north end of Long Lake had shared her dock that was turned and kind of twisted a little bit. And um, I also had found out that Pillsbury was hit pretty hard. So that led me to Pillsbury and it was really devastating there. Yeah, there's a lot of damage all around the area and we're going to be looking at some different video footage. Some of the photos were photos that were sent in. Some of you, thank you for, for all of those of you who sent in the photos and such. We know some of you and we can have your names and such. Some of you, uh, some people sent some photos in and didn't put your name on there. But if you have any kind of photos or video that you shoot on your phone and would like to share with us for our Thursday show, go to htnewstv.com. You do that from your mobile device in a browser and there's a spot. You can just scroll down a page a little bit and there's a spot right there where you can upload the photo. And one person went through there and they clicked on that and they uploaded five or six photos and then he boom, they up they go right away. So you can select the photos and click that and then upload and it's really quick and easy. But let's look at some of the storm damage from around the area. We're gonna start looking at some of the storm damage that happened down in Melrose. We have Sarah Hoffner from the Melrose Chamber. There was a lot of damage that happened overnight. I've heard about many businesses, um, such as Kramer, who lost a shed. Ars Auto, you might have noticed, their building almost went completely down with one wall still standing. Um, Boomerang had some roof damage. There was some damage at Genio, um, out at the cemetery, and there were many trees down all around the community. This is Sarah Hoffner with the Melrose Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Sarah. There was a ton of damage down in Melrose, and that you're looking at some of the images that are coming from the cemetery there. That was the St. Mary's Cemetery. A lot of trees went down. This is a different shot of the boomerang facility, and you see the roof is all white. Basically what happened is the building on the left lost part of the roof, and it blew the insulation over top of the next two buildings. Because the roof was wet, it stuck like snow to the roof. Both the off-ramp and on-ramp on the west side of the bridge there in Melrose, the trees are basically completely gone. This was a boat from the boomerang lot that was thrown up against the fence and a few pieces of metal that were thrown over the fence towards the freeway. I went and covered the Pillsbury damage that happened. A lot of downed trees, I should say uprooted trees. Yeah, and they were down too. There's a lot of branches down there. Oh, it's just unbelievable. The amount of damage in just kind of a small area and it all seemed to be kind of on the one end of the lake. Yeah, that's what happens when you have these these huge downdrafts that come from these supercell thunderstorms. They'll have that massive blast of air that comes through, and whatever's in the way is going to go down. Yeah, it, there was actually spots where it had uprooted trees or broke them off, and the tree would be like thrown like a couple feet before you'd even see it laying on the ground. Oh. I did a lot of coverage yesterday, so if you want to see some of the vo from some of the video footage, go to our Facebook page. Which is out at facebook.com slash hometown news and you can see the live uh, or the videos as they were shot right on site yesterday. And again more house damage. This was towards the lake side of the houses there. Look at those big root balls from these massive old trees that were just ripped out of the ground like there's nothing going on. Yeah, they were they were taller than myself. Just a lot of damage. These two cars happened to be they were down by the shed when they storm hit and actually had busted out the windows because the cars got hit. There's some wood actually in the back end. Jeez. The uh, tree there is completely stripped. They actually had their paddle boat was up in the tree and they had to cut that and get that lowered and out of there. I think the cleanup crew kind of started at that end of the the road just to get it open and cleared up and it was just unbelievable the amount of damage. A lot of these places lost pretty much most of their trees in their yards. They were replacing windows, there's holes in roofs. Here's one of the pictures that I used in the Hometown News this week. Um, notice where the boat motor is. 
I didn't realize that when I was on site, but it's kind of interesting. We have the, the boat lift turned over. We have the boat and then the motor up by shore. And the canopy, yep. Just massive sized trees too. They're just, I mean, they're not little trees. And the twisted up metal from utility shed or car canopy. Um, there was trees down on campers. There's actually a big fifth wheel that was blown over and on its side. Royal Loven had come and helped uh, pull that one back up. But that's what they used to clear the roads off with was a bobcat with a claw, which was a real labor saver. Today I went back and I had done a follow-up coverage of the area and it has changed a little bit. There's been a lot of improvements already. This actually is a picture of the place that I had on the front with the smashed garage. This is going over Highway 12. County Road 12, yeah. And of course, as I just showed some of the damage, though, it continued to cross the highway and the amount of trees and things that are down. It was like a narrow path that just kind of like went right through there. These yeah. trees are standing beautifully and yet you go over and there's trees down and uprooted and... Stripped. Yes, wow. completely stripped. This is a picture of the garage that I had on the front page of the Hometown News. Yesterday when I was there, I couldn't get that close because of the huge tree down, but that is a Corvette that was in the garage. It looks like it's a lot smaller, a lot shorter Corvette than it was before. Oh, and you look at the, the brick. That is a brick wall and the tree or wind had just completely demolished it and there's a tree up by the house there it, those places on the end just really took a lot of beating over there from Pillsbury I went to the north end of Long Lake where they had a lot of damage and trees down and I thought it was kind of interesting where they had the men at work and of course they're cleaning up the streets and just a lot of tree damage and such down there also they had docks overturned. There's one that was submitted that was obviously tipped and had some storm damage, uprooted pine trees. And again, we have more coverage of this on our Facebook page also. These were some more photos that were submitted by Long Lake. A tree that had gone down and actually done quite a bit of damage to the gazebo there. Here we have an overturned pontoon, which was down by the boat landing. And the boat lift, is missing. It's somewhere out in the lake. Next we have some storm damage from the El Rosa area. Now this was a silo, an older silo, that basically fell across the yard away from the building and it went across the road right here. You'll see that. What a mess that would turn out to be. But this wow. is, yeah, this is down by El Rosa. And then this is a grain bed. Now, something like that would happen with a tree hitting it. I don't know how that happened, but what an incredibly uh, incredible amount of damage. And then, of course, a roof just peeled away on this building. And Sharon Walbeck sent a couple of pictures from some damage that happened just south of St. Rose. Most of the damage happened kind of down by the end of Long Lake. But there were trees down, there were houses uh, that had some damage and such, and there was a shed, I believe, if I heard right, down on one of the farms that was taken out. That camper looks like it's not going to be camping too much this next week. Here's a picture that Jason Barton had submitted from west of Greenwald. Look at that barn. So a lot of damage. Again, it was all caused by straight line winds from Melrose, Greenwald area, down to Belgrade. They were mm -hmm. saying there's some massive, it's all one little thunderstorm. Now we're gonna have a really warm day tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be kind of a hot, sticky day. If you've been listening to some of the Minneapolis stations, they're talking that tomorrow we may have a heat index of close to 100 to 105, which is incredibly so, hot and yeah. sticky. We're going to be in the mid, somewhere in that 80, mid 80s, maybe the upper 80s, but there's gonna be a temperature variation between Minneapolis here and then up to the Northwest as a front starts to move through this weekend. Hmm. So this weekend could be a kind of a, a, a thunderstorm rainy weekend, but we might have some severe weather that's going to be coming through a little bit tonight. But then again, there's going to be a chance for some on Friday and depending upon the weather and how things move through, it could be the whole weekend could be kind of a washout and thunderstorm rainy weekend. So yeah. definitely not a weekend to be planning a lot of stuff outdoors. 
We kind of had that weather last weekend too. We got cool and it was rainy because the Pioneer Days and it, it was just not a nice weekend. But Sunday actually kind of cleared up. It was cool. So maybe we'll have a repeat of... Hey, we no. might just have that. You never know. It's hard to say. The weather changes so quickly at this time of the year oh, as pressure systems and all the different... Uh, influences from some of those tropical storms it does affect how that jet stream flows across the upper midwest as weird as it may sound it all kind of works together so and i think sometimes when we get those september and october thunderstorms we kind of put our guards down because we think summer and the severe stuff's over when really we can get some really severe storms out of very that. nasty weather as we saw last night was talking to some different people today and they were saying that wind speed, some people were clocking wind at that 60 to 70 mile an hour. I and mean, we've heard some reports of wind all the way up to about 90 miles an hour that people who actually really do have the tools for testing this. So it definitely had some very nasty wind in the area from last night. And we may not have a repeat of that completely, but with that heat, if it does get a little bit warmer, if it's pushing the upper 80s to lower 90s on Friday, Friday night could be some, some severe weather, so definitely keep your ears and eyes open this weekend because it could be a really uh, a serious time this weekend with the weather. And actually with the winds, I was told that 74 miles an hour is actually hurricane winds, so we've had hurricane wet so some winds of, around here. So some of you lived through a Category 1 hurricane on Tuesday night. Well, maybe not quite. And here we think we're safe in Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you for watching our weekly broadcast. If you'd like to have some pictures and such added, or if you've got an upcoming event, you can contact us at the Hometown News email address. You can send it to our, our different social media aspects, or you can go to htnewstv.com. And on that page is the link where you can text message something over if you want to. It has the link for uploading, which some of you did with the different storm photos, which we thank you very much for, for all of the different photos and the information. And if you see something happening that we should be able to come on out and shoot some video of, please contact us. Facebook, a lot of you are there, and it's a great spot to get in touch with us, and we really appreciate all the tips and photos. You guys are just absolutely awesome. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next Thursday night. I'm Lori Young. And I'm John Young with the Hometown News TV. Have a good night.